there has perhaps never been a time when the galaxy wasn't divided. Between empires and republics, Jedi and Sith, between the light and the dark. The delicate balance between the two may be fated to play out for eternity, with every soul in the universe meant to embrace one or the other. Yet, for as long as this struggle has persisted, some have refused to take sides. They have rejected their destiny, and in place of an allegiance to any higher purpose, live lives coated in shades of grey, answerable only to themselves. These are the rogues of the galaxy, the freelancers, smugglers, bounty hunters, privateers, and wanderers. From the deepest recesses of Coruscant to the furthest marches of the Outer Rim territories, these elements have aligned themselves to common interests. At times, when the balance of galactic events was particularly precarious, they have left a mark on history as pivotal and lasting as any statesman. But no organization has ever burned brighter, cast shadows darker, or found greater purpose in the twilight than the criminal syndicate named Black Sun. At its height, Black Sun involved itself in every manner of activity imaginable, some lawful, some not, and some so intricate it was impossible to tell one way or the other. Its worst aspects were centered upon extortion, racketeering, piracy, black market trade, weapon smuggling, and the trafficking of sentience. Yet at the same time, it operated innumerable front organizations, some so respected and honored they were considered the pinnacle of ethical business across the galaxy. They were at once respected financiers, industrialists, underground criminals, and gangsters, but most importantly, the liaisons in between. Depending on precisely where and precisely when their operations were conducted, these activities might be within perfect accordance with local laws, but they might just as easily circumvent and shatter them. The path taken by Black Sun was always the one of least resistance and greatest profit. Key to this strategy was their enormously effective intelligence gathering. Black Sun information networks were pervasive, from the lowliest informants ratting on their fellows in backwater cantinas, to business and political leaders with close ties to the reigning galactic government. Even the Imperial Intelligence Services operated by Palpatine's empire often lacked the accuracy and scope of Black Sun, and were at times even infiltrated themselves. Through this web, its leadership knew precisely which rules it might bend on which planets, and which it might shatter. For most of its existence, Black Sun was directed by a single leader, known as the Underlord, who attained power either by climbing the Syndicate's ranks, or through a direct and usually hostile takeover. This system attracted a wide range of ruthless individuals, from the infamous Foleen Prince Shizor to the mysterious Sith assassin Darth Maul. While a competent Underlord might direct the activities of Black Sun for decades, a lesser individual might merely preside over an era of instability and be leader in little more than name. Directly beneath the Underlord were nine Vigos, or nephews and old Tianese, who directly controlled the designated sector of space within the Black Sun's sphere of influence. Despite the familial nomenclature they used, Vigos were rarely from the same bloodline, but instead used the title to convey a sense of stability to outsiders. In practice, however, Vigos were deeply territorial and competitive. On the passing of the Underlord, these Vigos would clash with one another to determine which would assume the title. The clout held by the Underlord was unparalleled, but even a lesser Vigo, granted authority over a comparatively minor region of the galaxy, would enjoy more wealth and power than all but a handful of beings throughout history. Beneath the Underlord and Nine Vigos were the various collectives, conglomerations, families, and gangs that formed the bureaucracy and foot soldiers of the organization. These were typically led by an ad hoc hierarchy of individuals that answered only to their designated Vigo. In some cases, the organizational structure of local businesses or governments would be integrated into Black Sun's power structure, in many cases without their direct knowledge. 
This decentralized and adaptable clandestine cell system allowed Black Sun to spread across the galaxy supremely effectively, with each subgroup free to exploit opportunities through its own initiative, whilst remaining under the general direction of their Vigo. This also helped to ensure that, when groups were inevitably wiped out by competitors, or incarcerated by particularly bold law enforcement, the organization as a whole and its inner workings were not compromised. In star systems in which local or galactic government was particularly strong, Black Sun was content to operate in the shadows. But in those where it held complete control, it became a government unto itself. They would take control of civic services, often providing them more effectively than the previous government had been able to. Their foot soldiers and flotillas of ships would act as security forces, preventing other criminal organizations from moving in. Occurrences such as these were typically in the turbulent backwaters of the mid and outer rim. Though Black Sun could sometimes resemble something close to a legitimate security service on more respectable core worlds. In all cases though, it was just as likely to commit offenses as prevent them. While the power of the Vigos and the organization as a whole regularly waxed and waned, Black Sun boasted enough enforcers and ground troops to rival a planetary army. Many were little more than street thugs and local enforcers, but others were well-trained mercenaries and bounty hunters whose skills rivaled professional soldiers. When the circumstances demanded it, these forces could be supplied with armored transports, fighting vehicles, and heavy support platforms. The Syndicate itself operated a sizable flotilla of smuggling ships, transport freighters, starfighters, and even larger escort frigates and cruisers. Although precise numbers are impossible due to the cellular nature of the Syndicate, the scale of their operations across the galaxy suggested a fleet strength numbering in the tens of thousands, and likely far higher. The majority of these ships were little more than publicly available civilian craft or surplus obsolete military designs. Some ships operated by Black Sun, however, approached those operated by the Galactic Republic and Galactic Empire in both their size and capability. The power of Black Sun stretched back to the Great Galactic War, in which the Sith Empire and Galactic Republic entered into a prolonged struggle for dominance. It was during the sacking of Coruscant, one of the great tragedies of the era, in which the organization is believed to have first formed. With its infrastructure in ruins and law enforcement overwhelmed across the capital, gangs of criminals began to take control of lower-level neighborhoods, becoming the new de facto authorities. The embittered locals had little choice but to pay protection credits, leading to the common expression that it was better a black son than none. It was from this grim saying that the rising criminal enterprise would take its name. Though the expansion of the organization across Coruscant would eventually be curbed, first by planetary security forces and the Republic's Special Information Service, and later by direct military intervention, Black Sun's reach across the capital was enough for it to create footholds on neighboring worlds. Whether through luck or design, though likely a bit of both, Black Sun was able to rapidly spread across the galaxy and avoid the brief lifespan that all too often afflicted criminal empires. On many worlds, it existed only in name, with no real connection or loyalty to those who had flourished on Coruscant. By the time of the Clone Wars, nearly 4,000 years later, the Black Sun Crime Syndicate had consolidated its disparate elements to become a force of significant influence across the galaxy. Perceived as a potential threat to the designs of the future Emperor, Sheev Palpatine, he dispatched his Sith apprentice Darth Maul to throw Black Sun into disarray. Despite the death of the Underlord and several Vigos at Maul's hand, the outbreak of open war between the Republic and Confederacy provided an opportunity for the organization to expand even further. As the galaxy destabilized, it acted quickly to exploit undefended systems and unregulated markets wherever it could reach. As the war escalated, these opportunities became all the more frequent, as were derelict starships abandoned by both sides that could be either scrapped or salvaged. During the mid-rim sieges, Black Sun became increasingly involved in the course of the war itself. It assisted in weapon smuggling with the radical Mandalorian faction, Death Watch, 
and actively work to support their coup against the reigning Duchess Satine Kreis. Its wartime successes led Black Sun to become a leading force in the Shadow Collective, a coalition of various criminal empires organized under the rule of Maul, now exiled from the service of Palpatine. The Collective, however, would be short-lived, and Black Sun would quickly fall back into a rivalry with its former members following its disillusion. As the galactic civil war between the Empire and the Growing Rebellion began to escalate, Black Sun reached what was likely its apex under the Folene Prince, known as Gizor. Once an aspiring Vigo, as Underlord, he had pursued a close relationship with the nascent Empire and was allowed to operate relatively undisturbed. Though a brilliant administrator and talented negotiator, Gizor was driven by a personal vendetta that would ultimately destroy his critical partnership with the Empire. Darth Vader, Emperor Palpatine's most trusted and deadly servant, had ordered the death of Gizor's family some years earlier, and Black Sun's resources became dedicated to avenging their murder. When word eventually reached Vader that Black Sun intended to have Luke Skywalker killed, a move designed to discredit Vader in the eyes of Palpatine, Shizor was killed aboard his personal Skyhook. Poised to benefit immensely from the construction of the DS-2 orbital battle station, the abrupt end of their partnership with the Empire would instead cripple Black Sun for decades. Amidst several competing claims for leadership, the sprawling organization fell into civil war, and Black Sun would never again reach the heights of power and influence it held under either Maul or Gizor's leadership. It remained largely disintegrated throughout the era of the New Republic, unable to gather its strength, and repeatedly overtaken by rival groups it had outmaneuvered for centuries. Although they would eventually drift into legend, the mark left by Black Sun on the face of the galaxy would never truly fade. In their relentless pursuit of wealth and power, one unchecked by laws, borders, regimes, or armies, Black Sun proved a truth of the galaxy that none could deny. Republics and empires, Jedi and Sith, the light and the dark, for as long as the struggle endures, there will always be the shades of grey in between. And there, there is where the Black Sun forever shines. Attention Institute personnel. We're heading to the den of scum and villainy known as Anaheim this week to conduct a field investigation into Star Wars Celebration. We'll be documenting the entire journey on social media, so if you haven't already, be sure to give us a follow. You'll find all the links in the video description. And just in case anyone asks, we have no idea how all those death sticks and spice ended up in our luggage. 